Yellowstone Supervolcano Hydrothermal Breakia Pipes, Caldera, and the latest updates. This is from the Caldera Chronicles, weekly column written by scientists and collaborators of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. This week's contribution is from Lisa Morgan, Emeritus Research Geologist with the U.S. Geological Survey. You may have seen documentaries that feature bizarre-looking creatures living near submarine hydrothermal vents that spew pressure streams of a cloudy-looking water, and such sites are often associated with mid-ocean ridges. But there are also dozens of active hydrothermal vents fields on the floor of Yellowstone Lake. And here's a picture of one of the vents in Yellowstone Lake, as you can see on the right-hand side. Now, have you ever wondered what it would be like to see what underlies these vents? Well, today is your lucky day. Multiple hydrothermal breccia pipes are exposed along the northern and western shores of Yellowstone Lake, and they provide clues into the shallow roots of the active vent systems. Geologically, they are referred to as breccia pipes because they are made up of broken bits of their diatome-rich lacustrine sedimentary host rock. You remember one of the videos in the past, a couple of days ago, we had someone called Muffler. And he says yes, like what we have in our cars. And when he was a young geologist, he was in charge of drilling holes so that he could place uh, instruments, a seismometer instruments inside those drilled holes. And what he found was diatome-rich sands. He didn't find lava. He found diatome-rich sands. And he uh, went to a supervisor and said, I don't find any lava anywhere. I keep finding uh, diatome sands. And he said, was this a huge hydrothermal eruption that took place? You know, the super eruption that they had the last one, 640,000 years ago. Was it all of this sand, all these hundreds of uh, thousands of feet of sand and tuff that came out and ash? Was it diatomic? And his supervisor said yes. And that's amazing. And now we see this here as well. Now they're saying that uh, they, these pipes are made up of these broken bits of their diatome rich lacustrine sedimentary host rock. The structures discussed here are generally small, ranging from 1 to 3 meters, or that's 3 to 10 feet in diameter, so uh, to as much as uh, 3 to 16 feet in height. They have a cylindrical shape that widens towards the top where fluids are discharged. Now, the Yellowstone Lake breccia pipes exist because the slight inflation and subsidence associated with the deformation of Yellowstone caldera causes the ground to develop fractures, which become pathways for hydrothermal fluids to travel. As breccia pipes form, the hydrothermal fluids dissolve the silica-rich host rock, creating voids into which the adjacent rock host rock collapses. Now, continuing up of the flow of the hydrothermal fluids rich in silica and hydrogen sulfide causes quartz, sulfur, pyrite, and other sulfides and various clay minerals to fill in and recrystallize in small spaces between the broken host rock, kind of like grout between bathroom tiles. The western shore of Yellowstone Lake hosts the young batch of breccia pipes. They form along northeast and northwest trending fractures and are related to ongoing caldera deformation of the Elephant Bank Fracture Zone. Fluids flow up through existing fractures, which feed into the young and actively forming pipe structures. Several are in close proximity with each other and in various stages of formation. In inactive mineral, uh, mineralizing a breccia pipe, informally referred to as the black dog, 
hydrothermal breakia pipe has been studied along with northern shore of Yellowstone Lake. It was once exposed in the bluffs along the shoreline, but erosive wave action caused the feature to topple out of the cliff face. The black is a name referred to its dark color, which reflects uh, the finely disseminated pyrite and other sulfides, the pyrotite, the arsenopyrite, present in the siliceous breccia, make the matrix grout. The black dog breccia body has characteristics similar to the breccia pipes now forming on the western shore, and the black dog pipe, however, is a larger, resistant, more mature, and developing body that contains intensely mineralized breccia clasts in a mineralized matrix. The structure is located about 1.25 miles west and outside of the Mary Bay Explosion Crater. Hydrothermal fluids ascended along joints in the base of the breccia body. In recent years, measured temperature of fluids seeping out along these joints were about 18 degrees Celsius or 64 degrees Fahrenheit. An orange bacterial mat is associated with these seeps. Small active hydrothermal springs exposed on the shoreline about 200 feet to the east of the mineralized breccia pipe have diameters of 6 inches with temperatures of about 33 to 42 degrees Celsius, that's 91 to 108 degrees Fahrenheit. And they have neutral pH. This vent is covered with orange and green bacterial mats. These active spring, springs likely represent the waning stages of a hydrothermal system, the systems that probably had temperatures of at or below boiling on the lake floor. The black dog breccia pipe has been slowly eroding due to strong wave action from Yellowstone Lake. Present exposure suggests that the breccia body was an open and vigorous hydrothermal system prior to emplacement of the Mary Bay explosion deposit that took place about 13,000 years ago. The Mary Bay hydrothermal explosion, breccia, and its associated lower dark sand unit are found directly on top of the breccia body. Both units are completely solidified and formed a local resistant knob, suggesting that hydrothermal activity continued for some time after the explosion. The breccia pipes are undoubtedly common in Yellowstone Lake, below many of the active hydrothermal vents. The shorelines of Yellowstone Lake provide an opportunity to have a view into the shallow upper level of hydrothermal systems, which feed hydrothermal vents we generally only can see as hot springs on the lake floor. Now, the hydrothermal explosion. The explosions that occur when hot water, of course, within a volcano's hydrothermal hot water system flashes to steam, breaking rocks and throwing them into the air. That's a hydrothermal explosion. That was the uh, Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles. Now I want to go into the deformation and also the monitoring of the quakes to see what's happened lately. Okay, here we are at the monitoring. USGS for Yellowstone. This is the park boundary, the blue line, and this is the caldera, the light orange line. And uh, if we look at this, we have 108 earthquakes the past uh, 28 days. But when we pan out a little bit, oh, sorry, that's too much. Okay. Uh, when we pan out a little bit towards the northwest, we see that we have more earthquakes here, swarms here, swarms here. Okay, uh, the red is the past hour, and the yellow is the past week. And uh, if we go up north even more, uh, this is the past day. Okay, two magnitude, the past day. Uh, we have a lot more, and this, of course, is part of. Look at this. Okay, this is, of course, part of the Yellowstone uh, system. It's not just the park boundary that is the 
supervolcano. For example, this here is Hebgen Lake. That's where the 1959 uh, 7.3 magnitude earthquake took place. And that's outside of the park, park boundary. So, you know, you just can't take the uh, quakes inside the park boundary saying that that's the only uh, portion of the uh, Yellowstone supervolcano that we're looking at. Uh, I'd like to go and see the deformation, though. Oh, no, we didn't have to do that. We could have stayed there. What am I saying? We have the GPSs there. Sorry. Let's go to the GPSs there. Okay, here we are. Let's go to this one. HVWY. See what's happening. Okay. Uh, this is from... 2004 up to today and we can see that it's, it was going west and then it started going east and it's going east now whereas it was going west it's going east now and um, it was going north then it was turned to go south then north and this goes south. So it's going southeast. It's going southeast. And it's deflating. It was inflating, deflating, inflating, deflating. Okay, it's going southeast and it's deflating north of the uh, park right there. It's going southeast and it's deflating. All right. Southeast and deflating. Let's take this one. That's deflating as well. I don't know what that is. Let's just forget that. That's basically stable, I would say. Uh, this is sort of going south. And it's deflating. Let's take one that's a little bit better. Uh, shall we take... Let's take this one, P680, okay, that is heading a little bit west and southwest and basically steady. That's going southwest. So this one's going southwest, that one's going southeast, they're going every which way every which way. Let's take this one here, GPS near Hebgen Lake. Okay, that's a little bit inflating. That's uh, basically east is steady. It's going south and it's inflating. Hebgen is inflating a little bit. Should we go here? Or we have more of the activity. That's very strange. I guess that's um, seasonal, but it's inflating. And this is going east, it's going northeast, and it's inflating. It's going northeast, it's going northeast, and it's inflating. What can I tell you? This is, uh, okay, these are the directions that were sh being shown by GPS. So I'll leave links below for you for this. Now concerning the Mary Bay explosion, the hydrothermal explosion that took place in Yellowstone Lake some 13,000 years ago, it blew out a crater more than three miles across. And of course created earthquakes for that as well. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, 
most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.